Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about our paper, uh, Zin Swap and Blocky Swap. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. This is joint work between the ACL Cell Lab at the Technion and uh, Western Digital Research. Over time, data for additional memory in servers increases. Data center applications exhibit larger and larger memory footprints, but not all data is born equal. For example, some data is used more often than others, or some data in memory belongs to files and others do not. Whenever the system is under memory pressure, it relieves it by reclaiming system memory. During memory reclamation, file-backed pages are discarded or written back to the backing device to free up memory. Anonymous pages, on the other hand, are swapped out to a swap device. Swap allows the system to efficiently balance file-backed and anonymous pages in memory during memory reclamation. Some have even advocated to use swap device as a, as a memory extension mechanism. Swap is regaining interest in academia, with recent works uh, proposed to offload the swapping mechanism to dedicated hardware. In industry, several projects, such as Facebook's FBDAX2, introduced swap controls, and Alibaba's kernel now supports per C group background uh, memory reclaim mechanisms. With the advent of, uh, fla of uh, fast flash-based SSDs, swap has become more attractive. Advances in flash and interconnect technologies reduce the access latencies and increase the available bandwidth to SSDs. This is all great for memory swapping. However, when we evaluate the performance of swap on SSD, we encounter some performance anomalies. To illustrate one such anomaly, we perform random memory writes in a memory bound C group, filling the SSD that serves as a swap device to different utilizations. The graph shows the swap bandwidth as a function of different swap device utilizations. We notice a significant drop as early as 20% of device utilization. At 20% utilization, the bandwidth is less than half. We therefore investigate this and other anomalies we observed with swap on SSDs, analyzing the root causes of such performance aggregations. In this talk, I'll present a brief background on SSDs, their drawbacks, and how they affect swap performance on SSDs. I'll then present some background on the new zone namespaces interface for SSDs. And finally, I'll present our work, Zen Swap, presenting its design, some design challenges we have faced in the real system, and our systems evaluation. Flash-based SSDs are divided into erase blocks. Each of these erase blocks are further divided into pages. Writes can be performed at page granularity and must be written sequentially within an erase block. Erase operations are performed at an erase block granularity. Pages cannot be overwritten, therefore, no rewrite, therefore to rewrite pages within an erase block, the whole block must be erased before written to again. The constraints of flash media do not match the traditional block interface we are all acquainted with today. In order to expose an interface that allows in-place updates and random writes, a, fresh, a flash translation layer, or an FTL, within the SSD abstracts the complexities and limitations of the underlying media. The FTL maps logical block addresses, or LBAs, to, host, uh, to the host, and uh, the host utilizes those addresses in order to access the actual data which is stored within the physical device. The mapping layer is a necessary evil to uphold the block interface, since it is a complicated and a resource expensive component of the SSD. Due to the granularity mismatch between the media's write and delete operations, SSDs need to perform garbage collection to reclaim flash capacity. We explain the garbage collection process with an example. Let's assume an SSD has only two erase blocks. The first set of pages within erase block A is the data of LBAs zero to three. The host writes the next four LBAs in the sequence and wishes to rewrite LBAs zero to three. The new data will be appended to the end of the erase block while the old data is invalidated. The FTL will now map LBAs zero to three to the newly written pages, invalidating the first four pages within the erase block. These pages cannot be overwritten or used um, until the erase block itself is erased. To reclaim the available capacity currently occupied by the invalid pages in the erase block A, the SSD performs the garbage collection operation. The operation copies only the valid pages 
within erase block A into a new erase block, erase block B, and erases erase block A. This operation will also lead to the remapping of all of the copied pages within the FTL itself. The write amplification factor is the number of overall, of overall writes to the device divided by the number of writes actually issued by the host. The number of overall writes includes writes directly issued by the host and copies performed by the garbage collection mechanism. Therefore, a write amplification of one indicates that no garbage collection operations happened and the, right, and the high write amplification factor indicates more, more internal writes issued by the garbage collector which leads to lower device performance. We identify that the root cause of the swap performance degradation on the SSD in the previous graph is due to the garbage collection overheads. We observe that garbage collection impacts performance even when the device utilization is really low. Theoretically, this should not be the case as there should be not many valid pages within the erase blocks that the garbage collection actually has to copy. We identify that this phenomenon occurs due to the knowledge gap between the SSD and the operating system. The SSD is unaware that some swap data written is considered invalid by the host, meaning that the data will no longer be read by the host. This leads to unnecessary data copies performed by the garbage collector, which increases write amplification and decreases performance. Trim operations are hints provided by the host to the SSD, informing it that data is no longer needed by the host. Theoretically, at low device utilizations, if a trim operation was dispatched by the host for every invalid swap datum on the SSD, the garbage collector, were, the garbage collector would not impact the performance that much. We observe that current trim support for SSDs is too coarse-grained to have any effects, and attempts at achieving finer granularity trims do not have a significant impact on performance due to the maximum rate at which the host itself and the device process such trim commands. A more detailed analysis can be found in our paper. The garbage collection uh, uh, performance effects, it affects the entire SSD. It's a direct uh, consequence of an autonomous design um, that the SSD performs garbage collection on its own and its impairment on any isolation attempts that the host wishes to maintain. To illustrate such behavior, we perform an experiment with two C groups, which utilizes the same swap device. Each C group is throttled to utilize half of the available SSD bandwidth. C group A performs random read operations only, hence it does not invalidate any flash pages on the SSD and on its own will not trigger garbage collection. C group B performs random writes, which eventually lead to a garbage collection performed by the device. The graph below shows the swap in bandwidth of both C groups as a function of time. At first, both C groups are able to sustain their maximum allocated bandwidth. And after some time, we can see that the swap in bandwidth of both C groups deteriorates. Only, the, only, uh, only C group B actually causes the garbage collection. So this should not be the case. <clears throat> the new Zonda namespaces interface for SSDs enable a tighter coupling between the SSD and the applications. In a nutshell, the SSD is divided into, into zones, each have uh, the size of an erase block. Each zone can only be written to sequentially and has to be reset before rewriting the data to the zone. This means that such ZNS devices do not need a complicated FTL nor a uh, garbage collection mechanism, as these responsibilities now fall into the host while presenting the host with a higher degree of control over the device. On the right, we can see how such a higher degree of control can be utilized. When several applications use a regular SSD, pages from different applications can be co-located onto the same erase blocks. This can lead to high garbage collection overheads due to pages uh, with different lifetimes co-located onto the same erase block. With the ZNS SSDs, applications can utilize zones to ensure that uh, only their data reside within a specific zone. Thus, data with similar lifetimes are co-located together, which lowers or eliminates garbage collection altogether. In our work, we observe that to achieve better swap performance, the system needs to gain control over key mechanisms within the SSD. 
ZNS is the key enabler and allows us to design a swap subsystem that suits the properties of the underlying media. ZN swap synergizes between the OS swap logic and ZNS SSDs in order to achieve more efficient swapping. ZNS swap, ZN swap's design goals are to enable fine grain swap management with host side garbage collection, which relinquishes the needs for trims, an efficient swap cache and the host garbage collection co design that lowers write amplification, to enable custom data placement and garbage collection reclamation policies and to achieve isolation between multiple tenants on a system that shares a swap device. I'll now go over ZN Swap's main design components following, uh, following an example of a memory pages swap out process. A candidate anonymous page is selected by the system in order for it to be swapped out. The page enters the ZNS page reclaim component, which handles page table and swap cache operations. In contrast to original swap logic, ZN swap utilizes the zone append operation. The zone append operation only informs the host of the destination of the written data after it has actually been written. It does not know this data beforehand. Before the page is written to the SSD, the page reclaim module consults with the policy manager that determines the destination zone as per the placement policy. The policy manager also guides the host site garbage collector to free certain zones on the device. The zone allocator seamlessly handles new zone allocations, hiding the complexities of zone management and certain limitations imposed by the ZNS SSD. The page is then submitted to the block layer with a destination zone and is passed into the IO manager component. This component enables mergers of zone append operations for higher throughput and injects relevant per page metadata to the IO request. The IO manager submits the IO request to the NVMe driver, which then writes the data onto the ZNS SSD. The IO manager then updates the page reclaim component with the page's location once the write has been completed, as the zone append operation, we do not know beforehand where the data is going to be written. I'll briefly present the design of our whole site garbage collection mechanism, dubbed ZNGC. Details about rest, the rest of ZNSwap's components can be found in the paper. ZNSwap's whole site GC is tightly integrated with the kernel's virtual memory subsystem. It is designed to not dynamically allocate memory in a memory constraint system and to exhibit uh, low overheads during the garbage collection process. ZNGC also eliminates the need for trims, eliminates the performance jitters caused by the traditional SSD's garbage collector, and eliminates copies of invalid, of invalid swap data during the garbage collection process. Once a zone is selected for garbage collection, ZNGC only copies the necessary data um, from a swap device from, uh, from a specific zone into a new zone. Information on the status of each swap datum is available to ZNGC due to its tight integration with the virtual memory subsystem. ZNGC then proceeds to copy the relevant data from one zone to the other while taking care of intricate race conditions in the virtual memory subsystem. Contrary to traditional block SSDs, a page moved by ZNGC is assigned a new host visible address. In the example, page two from zone A is now located in page one of zone B. There is no intermediate translation layer as in traditional SSDs, and the contents within the page tables of the swapped out pages point to the uh, page's original location, that is zone A. ZNGC must therefore update the entries within the page tables to point to the new location. But how can we locate them without an exhaustive search? During the swap out process, each of the page's reverse mapping metadata is stored in the per LBA metadata region provided by the SSD. The stored metadata is the data used by the operating system itself to locate all page table entries of a physical memory page, and it consists of the anonymous VMA pointer and the index. The storage interface allows to retrieve the metadata along with the respective data in a single I.O. operation. Thus, ZNGC retrieves the metadata as a byproduct of reading the data in order to perform the reverse lookup of a given page and update the respective, the respective page table entries to the new location. 
We evaluate ZenSwap on the server running Ubuntu 20.04 and Linux kernel version 5.12. The server has 512 gigabytes of RAM. We compare the performance of two identical SSDs, where one utilizes a ZNS interface and the other uh, utilizes the conventional block interface. They both exhibit the same raw performance metrics, such as sequential and random IO operations. We evaluate the swap performance of ZN swap against the conventional SSD with and without trims enabled. We run the VM scalability micro benchmark in a two gigabyte memory bound C group and measure the achieved swap out bandwidth, which is a graph on the left and the right amplification factor, which is on the right. Both of the graphs are as a function of the swap device utilization. We can see in the left graph that ZN swaps achieves a higher throughput under all device utilization ratios and a significantly lower write amplification factor. At the lower extreme, with 10% device utilization, both a traditional SSD and ZN swap reach the maximum device bandwidth with a write amplification factor of only one, which is no garbage collection. Our host side GC exhibits only a 0.3% single core CPU overhead. At 50% utilization, ZN swap outperforms the traditional SSD by a factor of two, along with two times lower write amplification. This is achieved due to ZNGC's um, ability to avoid unnecessary data copies. Further, we can see that native trim support does not have any measurable effects on both metrics. The maximum CPU overhead we observed for the ZNGC is 15% of a single CPU core, even when the device utilization is very high. Enabling fine granularity trims at high device utilization exhibited the 32 CPU, uh, percent CPU overhead, which is twice as much as ZNGC's, but unlike ZNGC, it has no observable performance write amplification gains. We also evaluated memcached serving Facebook's ETC workload. In this experiment, we utilize the entire 512 gigabytes of, of memory available to the system and increase the memory footprint to utilize a swap device. The y-axis on the left graph is a 99th percentile latency of served requests, and on the right is a write amplification. As before, ZN swap outperforms a traditional SSD with and without trims. At 10% device utilization, ZN swap has 10 times lower 99th percentile and a 2.4 lower write amplification. This is all due to a more efficient and predictable whole site garbage collector. In this experiment, we evaluate ZN swap's ability to isolate the, perform the swap performance between tenants. In the same setup as the analysis, C group A performs 100% reads and B performs 100% writes. Each are limited to half of the device's bandwidth. We compare the performance of, of the C groups in each configuration as well as the bandwidth that the garbage collection process consumes itself. When comparing the left and middle columns, we can see that ZN swap exhibits lower garbage collection bandwidth, and it is therefore able to achieve higher bandwidth for both C groups over the block SSD plus trim. When the C group isolation mechanism is enabled on the right column, each of the C group swap data is placed into different zones, lowering the overall garbage collection bandwidth. Further, the isolation mechanism punts the garbage collection bandwidth to the C group that causes the garbage collection, which is accounted for in the per C group bandwidth throttle controls. Both C groups are able to achieve their bandwidth limits. To conclude, swap is regaining interest and current solutions for swap on SSDs suffer from performance anomalies caused by the knowledge divide between the SSD and the host. ZN swap regains control over key device mechanisms and allows the tight integration between SSD and OS swap subsystem. This is all enabled by the new ZNS SSD devices. Uh, I'll gladly accept any questions live, offline, via email, and thank you so much. And um, back to you.